Rebel Moon. Rebel Moon. Da, da, da. Which has not come out yet. It's not come out yet, but it's dang close. It's December close. 22nd. Um, we're going to get an awesome part one. We're, we're going to be collecting collecting these really cool characters around the galaxy. Mm-hmm. I don't and know why they come together to fight the Empire. Yes. And that's going to be the point. <clears throat> now, um, the, the, I have an article here that I did request uh, you guys preview. And there's yes, two main I have, areas. I have looked through it. Yeah, there's two main things I'd like to look at. I'd like to, previewed. I'd like to um, take a look at some of the thoughts that around this inception and, and coming to fruition of this <coughs> story. Because I think when a story <coughs> is created and then comes to the screen and becomes an actual thing, I think it's always an interesting process. And mm-hmm. for Zack Snyder, this is something he's been sitting on for a long time. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I wanted to look at that as well as here, like in this article, they claim um, this is an exclusive IP. So this is actually the first big non prequel or sequel or remake in Hollywood. Right. Mm. And it's also uh, a challenger for like in, on the Netflix platform, a challenger to think something like Star Wars, you know. And yeah. so. um so we wanted to just discuss that concept as well. But um but in a nutshell, this is a story that Zack Schneider had uh fa- kind of came to in college apparently. So there's a, an exercise where him and his classmates had to do a one sentence movie pitch of some sort, right? Mm. And and he came up with what was the phrase that he used? Do you remember what? The no. phrase, because I believe you actually was used it? it in a in a previous in in a reaction to it this past week. Did I really? Seventh Samurai was it? Yeah, Seven Samurai. Uh, that was that was here. I think this is more of the, the wait. Articles. Is that the, the, the version phrase? Seventh Samurai? No, That's no, no, no. Yes, it, it's it's a it's the trope. It's like the we're fall, oh, oh, it's like oh. Seven Samurai, but it's different. You know, it's it's different it's in these space ways. samurais. Sort of, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, uh, a lot of a lot of people have taken inspiration from Seven Samurai. I would say a lot of people. Um, yeah, uh, George Lucas took a lot of inspiration from Seven Samurai. Actually, from a lot of the works of um, uh, the director uh, Akira Kurosawa uh, right. did a lot of those sort of epic, um, sort of uh, old black and white Japanese movies. And then obviously seven samurai was the inspiration for the magnificent seven, Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the cowboy movies. Um, I have not seen the seven samurai, but I've seen like, yeah, the, the magnificent seven, magnificent seven, Mm -hmm. the new and old one. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I, I think we should watch the seven samurai. I think it's, that should be on our list. It's an interesting movie. Uh, and there's one concept, yeah, there's one concept in particular that happens in the movie that I wouldn't be surprised if it happens in this movie. Um, at the beginning of the movie, there's two older samurai. They're mm-hmm. they're like I, I think some of the first ones that are approached. There's one, he's an old he's an older samurai, and he is talking to another one, and they've both been in the same like wars and stuff. And they're talking to each other as like uh, here we are, both of us. Um, after oh. all the wars, we, you know, why is it that we are still here? Right. Uh, how how is it that we've survived? And then at the end of the movie, um, those two are like, here we are again. At the end of this thing, <laughs> alive. The end of all things. Of all things. <laughs> at the end of all things, <laughs> and it, it's really this. The it's really a, a beautiful concept. These two older samurai uh wow. that conversation in particular stuck out to me throughout the movie there's some other stuff that happens in the movie i'm, I'm that um kind of takes away from that I, but that idea i think is really the core of the movie right uh, this might make a little some people upset me asking this question is it in, mm. in english yeah mm-hmm. No, wait, no, okay. it's not Seven Samurai, but Seven Rebel Samurai. Moon is. No, it's all it's Japanese. It's old. It's black right. and white. That's what I thought. That's what um, I thought. 
Let's read this. So uh, the seed of Rebel Moon was first planted back when Snyder was a student at uh, Pasadena's Art Center College for Design in the late 80s. Tasked with creating one-line pitches, the future director settled on the Dirty Dozen in space. (laughs) Okay. Um, In other words, a ragtag team of warriors from different backgrounds assembled to fight a common cause, but plotting, uh, but piloting space... piloting spaceships and wielding laser guns instead of World War II bombers. Mm-hmm. Apparently, this idea killed in the room, and Snyder never forgot about it. Um, fast forward through periods of time where, you know, before it was actually sold to Disney, uh, curious to see if this could be a Star Wars idea that was pursued for a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. And and then uh, he worked on other films, and then it gets to Netflix. Uh, this is actually really interesting concept right here following the following in the footsteps of fellow filmmakers like david fincher tyler perry and guillermo del toro snyder eventually pivoted to netflix where he returned to his zombie movie roots with army of the dead when it was time to decide on the follow-up he reached into his back pocket that's been there since college for that old uh, Mm -hmm. sci-fi pitch from his school days now um that's interesting because did you guys watch I watched that new David Fincher movie, The Killer, on Netflix. I didn't realize that David Fincher fully Not, moved over to Netflix. Yeah. Um, which, you just as a side note, you should check it out because it does have a... It's a little bit more clunky than John Wick, but it has mm-hmm. a really epic fight scene that is rivaling John uh, with John Wick 4 or John Wick 5. Yeah. Uh, for mm-hmm. this past uh for this year like what's the best fight scene between those two movies so yeah. you should check out the killer um, um david fincher movie have you guys seen the dirty dozen i haven't i don't even know what it's about do you um, know what it's about <clears throat> yeah it's um it's about like a, a commander is given um a squad of convicts mm-hmm. and he has to turn them into commandos to fight you know the germans and if any of them survive uh, they'll be pardoned. Uh-huh. Okay. So it's basically, um, you know, a not comedy version of, uh, you know, Tropic Thunder. Yes. Well, no. It kind of has uh, that, that. The the dirty dozen. Ooh, we yeah, gotta watch it's, this. This looks it's cool. good. It's good. Uh, I've I've. It's been a it's, long time since I've seen it, but I like um, these kind of films of like The Great Escape. The uh-huh. Great Escape is is. It's a classic, but also like. It has that feel that's just fun to watch. It's a, you know, a Saturday afternoon movie to me. Yeah. I remember one scene in particular with Donald Sutherland. And he's just, uh, I think he's responsible for, uh, like, either fixing or driving the tank. Mm-hmm. And he's, he's like, sitting on either the ground or a chair. And they're like, what are you doing? And yeah. the, the tank is being fixed or something. He's like, I, you know, I'm just, I'm just. He's like a hippie, so he's like, I'm just, you know, eating some cheese, drinking some ro- <laughs> drinking some wine, catching some rays. And <laughs> me and me and Ethan, me and Ethan quote that line quite catching often. Catching some rays. Just catching some rays, eating some cheese, drinking some wine, <laughs> catching some rays. And he says it, he says it very Donald Sutherland hippie, eating some cheese, drinking some wine, <laughs> catching some rays. It's <laughs> a great moment in the movie. We definitely should uh, do that later today, maybe. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, continuing on this article, uh, I said, so this is quoting Snyder. I said, we could do an army sequel. So army of the dead, or I have a insane sci-fi universe Snyder recalls. So if you guys are interested in developing an original IP, I'm here for that. Turns out, um, these weren't mutually exclusive options Snyder told army of the dead rebel moon actually shared a universe. So apparently army of the dead and rebel moon are supposed to be in the same universe, but when everyone's talking about universes these days, go for it. Um, I mean, you know, whatever. Yeah. You you know, whatever. I mean, that's, that's, yeah, it's not a super fun, (laughs) like a mind blowing idea anymore. It's like, 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 sure. Yeah. This thing that happens on earth also, Way out in a faraway galaxy, there's also this stuff happening. Yeah, yeah you can exactly. you can you can do the same thing with uh, Star Wars and Indiana Jones, um, yes. Because in in one of the Indiana Jones movies, um, 
there's there's hieroglyphics with with C3PO and R2 right on them. So you could be like, "Oh yeah, they're definitely in the same universe. Just one happened a long time ago in a galaxy far far, <laughs> far away." away. <laughs> right, 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 right. Um so apparently uh this article also talks about how uh Netflix is is really investing I think it's 160 million, so not like the crazy mm. Marvel numbers, but <laughs> mm-hmm. it's flirting with good. what Disney Disney Marvel does um, into into Zach's films here and into this story, well, and they're really wanting to uh, have a competitor for Netflix to rival Star Wars and the Disney Lucas. Yeah, I, I don't mind that at all. It's now, definitely um, needed I, right now. I don't know if if I would consider it a rival. I mean, they probably are considering it a rival because mm. Star Wars is so big, or that's Disney's, you know, uh, I guess fantasy thing. But I would say I got two thoughts. One, we just saw the creator, and the creator, they were using stuff that wasn't, you know, huge, throwing mm. a bunch of money at it. They were doing some stuff to make it more cost effective. And yeah. yeah. We got a great film with the creator. So mm-hmm. I they definitely could do it with not a huge budget. And then also Star Wars has been established for so long. Why are they trying to compete with Star Wars? It's not so much they're trying to compete with the IP. They're trying to compete with the uh money business opportunity because right mm-hmm. now Star Wars makes a certain amount of money. Mm-hmm. Oddly enough, it makes probably the least amount than it ever has since it came out right now. Oh, yeah. Um, and it, they, they also, World, they also merchandise kind of, everything. They kind of dominate the market when it comes to this epic uh, sci-fi kind and of stuff. It, yeah, yeah. Um, and, Everything's and, lightsabers and, and, and you know, stormtroopers. Oh, if stuff. I were to put it, if I were to put it into an, an analogy, if your town has one good pizza place, mm. you know, and it has it for years and years and it starts out really good, um, after a certain amount of years, you know, they're, they're just going to become complacent. They're not going to get as good. You need, you need a rival pizza place. That's going to force them to get better. Yeah. And this is a perfect v- option for that because it was literally considered to place this story inside of the star Wars universe. Mm-hmm. So it has legs to stand on to rival something like star Wars because it's a, it's a direct rival to it in some mm-hmm. fashion, you know? You know what Star Wars should do? I don't, I know this is a little bit touching, uh, walking away from this conversation a tiny bit, but Star Wars should try something new in, like, stay with the Star Wars universe, but also just, like, touch something that it has not touched yet. Maybe Yeah, it did like, that with Andor, and everyone loved it. <laughs> yes, they, they should. I, I th- Everybody does love Andor, and it was a beloved thing, but yet not a lot of people Nobody attention. watched it. Yeah. But it still touched. Um, uh, it still touched on like the rebellion and stuff. People, yeah, yeah. But it still, yes, it still with. touched with a little bit. Maybe throw in a you know a small distant planet, way, mm. way, way outside of anything we know, and maybe just throw in a hint of you know time travel stuff. Almost like how Star Trek has just like you know Star Trek has that time travel in it, and just like. Touch Star on that Wars don't need to mess with time travel. They already brought in witches and and uh, spells that can take they've, they've from already the galaxy with, to the They've next. already messed with time travel. But in where, Ahsoka, where? they literally left the galaxy. So in um, in, in, in in Rebels, they mess with some time travel in that okay. like, world between so, worlds. So um, just touch on that and in. in uh, a little bit better, not anything we've seen before, because we get no, this. Yeah, hello. No, you you can't you can't that say be that fun. because Star Wars did it, and you don't want it. So you have to say not don't Star Wars doesn't need to do it better. They just don't need to do it, and someone else needs to make a new IP that does it better. That's what why it's saying. I think the competition is interesting. Also, kudos to Netflix for yeah. not constantly jumping on the remake sequel or prequel bandwagon you know what i mean they're literally doing animes like all the animes they're doing i'm just saying doing they could have went with army of the dead too but they i mean they probably still are they probably still are but look they're they're opening look there are so few i mean after this segment we're going to talk about the biggest anticipated films for next year Mm -hmm. 
pretty sure every single one is a remake. Every single one is a remake, a prequel, or a sequel. So we don't live in a world where this ever happens. So whenever there's an original (laughs) idea that's released, I'm so excited for it because Mm -hmm. I want newness. I don't want continuations constantly. I agree. 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 Um, And and Netflix. Who's investing in it? But Netflix. Everyone else is doing the the other thing. You know. I would rather watch a creator than a hunger games i know that's different because it's a book but i'd rather see watch the creator than the newest hunger games that's just a that's just a pre yeah movie. yeah between between this and like a new star wars thing dude give choose me this. or a new yeah i would choose this i want to see something interesting the the trailers look they if even if i think the 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 story or honestly even the acting or the writing isn't, you know, up to what I would like, which kind of was the case with a lot of the creator in some of the dialogue and writing choices. Mm-hmm. Um, I I want to see some some spectacle. I want to see some good, some good sci-fi fun. You I know, just want to have. Let me have fun. Yes. You know. Yes. <laughs> there is one one thing that is that Netflix would have to make a second of that I actually really want to see. And I mm. don't think they ever will. Was bright with Will Smith. I, you know, I for touched, all of, it, touched it, and I wanted it to be so good. For and all of the flaws, for all of the flaws in Bright, because I watched the mm. movie as well a long time ago. Um, it was, and it was a new, it interesting was idea. Cool. It was something. I want to see a second of that. And I would not be mad at a, a, a sequel on Look, that. Even here's the thing. It. If you want new stuff, Netflix has it. The problem is it's rarely the stuff that gets the most attention. Like, mm-hmm. that's what I'm saying. David Fincher, he's a brilliant director. He did Fight Club. Mm. He's done so many awesome movies, and very few people are watching The Killer. I've, it's his new uh, movie. No, it's his I, new I, movie I, on Netflix. People, people are talking about the killer. They're talking about it, but is it going to get anywhere near the 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 views that a Stranger Things Five is going to hit? You know, no, what I mean? probably not. Or but, anything that's that's just a continuation of stuff. Netflix I is think, testing I a think ton of new ideas. I, I think the killer is probably it's going to get more attention as time goes on. Even my dad texted me. He's like, "Have you seen the killer <laughs> on Netflix?" And I was like. <laughs> I was yeah, like, he no, did. but I, I've, I've heard it's, it's good. And he's like, yeah, you got to watch it. It's fun. I wouldn't say so. it's as deep. Like it's not, the concepts aren't as deep as other stuff David Fincher's done, but it's just a really interesting, well-crafted uh, espionage kind of, uh, mm-hmm. s- you know, sneaking around crafty kind of thing. Cool. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it flirts with spying and serial killing and, well, what else? Different ideas. What else do we have on Rebel Moon? Is are there any more points you wanted to hit really quick? I wanted to. I wanted to share. I wanted to share the journey of how a simple idea can become a cinematic <clears throat> epic, even if it remains a simple idea. Because mm. I feel like at its core, and even from just watching the trailers, you know, this is a. Th- there's like five, four to five tropes that are packed into this movie that really Mm -hmm. kind of define it that we've seen before. And it's literally built on this idea of it's like seven samurai. It's like dirty Mm -hmm. dozen, you know what I mean? And it still is going to be a a film that we enjoy. And there's not always the most crazy ideas have to come from like people that are brilliant, make brilliant films. Mm -hmm. Christopher Nolan is out here doing unique concepts that no one's ever thought of. But not everyone can be like Christopher Nolan. But you can be like Zack Snyder and do something like 300 that was first a comic. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. then do something like Rebel Moon that was just a very simple idea based on other stories that he knows. I, I would like to say about the tr- about tropes and stereotypes. I've always seen tropes and stereotypes as, especially in writing, um, a good writer knows how to use a stereotype as a mold um, mm-hmm. to – give your characters or your story some structure um you know you you can be as original as you want with whatever you put into that mold right um you just a a good writer knows how to use those stereotypes to their advantage the the mary the mary sue stereotype 
um, is seen a lot. And the problem is uh, they use it as the entire structure of a character. Right. Um, Define uh, the Mary Sue thing. Mar- the Mary Sue is the Mary know. Sue is a is a is a female character that is good at everything that has no oh, flaws. Okay. okay. So the Katniss um, Everdeen kind of. Well, Katniss, well, Katniss more is, of um, uh, more of Ray Ray Skywalker. Oh, yeah, Ray Ray yeah. Palpatine. Don't yes, Ray call her Palpatine. Skywalker. Um, she that she dead names herself that I will never yeah. respect it. <laughs> yeah, and and um. Using using the Mary Sue is is fine as long as the character inside that mold is interesting. So you and think I'm Katniss impressed. Everdeen's more of the interesting Mary Sue? She's more interesting, and you're hoping yeah. that uh, this character is more of an interesting Mary yeah, Sue. Yeah, I, I, I mean, absolutely. I always hope so. Yeah. What's already public knowledge? It doesn't spoil the film. Is mm. she was a soldier, a very skilled mm-hmm. soldier. She goes to this harvesting planet where they do wheat to get away and to live a simple life. Yeah. See, and as long then as it they pulls her back in, you as know long as I mean? they set up the fact that she has previous combat experience, that's mm-hmm. exactly what they're doing. That's yeah. awesome. I, you know, I wouldn't want her to just be like, oh, I'm this special person who has no experience with anything, but I'm good at everything. Yeah. Uh, they're setting up that she's she's been a soldier before, a pretty so. well esteemed soldier apparently yeah so I'm, I'm i'm looking forward to to seeing what they do with these characters somewhat we, we, hiding on this planet this 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 crop planet if you will mm. i am also looking forward to you know specifically the sound effects and the punching noises that they're going to be making for this mm. film. yeah i think i think that's what i'm going to be looking forward to the most yeah. um yeah. I, I this is kind of look say what you will about how how uh hormones work differently what? in the male and female body okay mm-hmm. oh, okay but there is a trend that obviously the old hollywood you have the most beautiful like anorexic looking women you know what i mean yeah. and they were they were they were the eye candy now with the women who are the the badasses you know what i mm. mean who who are the fighting and it can take down anybody and anybody Anybody and everybody, I mean. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where are we going with this? It, her arms are like this big, and this is yeah. a common thread. This is a common thread. Yeah, we're that seeing. They're, they're they're small. They're women. They're they're but women, you know, Gina Carano was not small. Well, Gina Carano is a, a like an MMA fighter. You don't have to be an MMA <laughs> fighter, like but there are or something. there are a handful of women. Like I w- I just finished watching. Okay. Uh, Give us the Mentalist. Mm-hmm. All right, the redheaded oh. character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She she has broad shoulders. She feels like when she when she jumps on a dude to arrest him, you believe it. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, a, a a girl who is supposed to be the like one of the most trained fighters, like super formidable uh, soldier, so and what she looks like she's 115 is, pounds. All, it's a well, what you're saying is, you know, we've we're requiring every superhero male. To just you know get really jacked and get on the the testosterone and the steroids, is you you think the women should be doing that too? Well, you know, I'm saying, no, I'm saying for the equal, women, no, 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 has some muscles on their body. That's no, because if you watch, especially in the second Iron Man movie with Black Widow, the way mm. that she fights lends itself well to a woman taking down larger right. opponents so she needs um, to fight not like a man using blunt force now punching. but then also uh, you they 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 give you characters like gamora who's been uh augmented with oh, okay, cybertronics yeah, yeah, yeah. and things we don't know what kind of we don't know what kind of training or augments or super serums or whatever that they have in this universe so look that's fine i'm guessing not many i'm guessing probably not it's any. A, it's a look at look at this picture there's yeah, laser swords, there's guns, there's robots. There's um, moons, there's grass. There's moons, there's the rebels. woman with the hat behind her with the swords, I'm like, heck yeah. A ninja with swords, you don't need a ton of yeah, muscle. You just have to know how to use swords hat. correctly. I'm going to believe we, that character all I'm day long. I'm just saying, look, it, it, as, long as, she has she, the, if she's, as long as she has the appropriate training. If she's um, snatching a dude like the, 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 the big titan looking black guy behind her, mm-hmm. if she takes a gun away from a dude that looks like him, punches him in the throat and leg sweeps him. I'm not going to believe it. Ah. I'm oh, not yeah, going to believe wait, that. No. You know, we'll, we'll have to wait. We'll have to wait for the movie to see the training. 
We'll have to yeah. wait for the movie we to see what We saw some of the fighting in the trailer, had. though. We did. Yeah. We did see a little bit of it. Yeah, we don't we know. We that's don't my know biggest what, critique, but it's in every movie. We don't know what they do to their soldiers. We don't, and I'm guessing so, probably not much. Yeah, they could because be Because of the nature of it. We'll see. Look, we'll see. If they, if it, I'll be happy if there's if there is an explanation for this. I'm guessing there's not going to be one, though. We will see. I, I'm not going to hold any judgments until I see the movie and see what they have to offer. Thank you.